Good afternoon, welcome to uh, V Brown Bag. My name is Ron Fuller. I'm an NSX SE based in Columbus, Ohio. I work with our SLED customers on NSX deployments and architecture. And today I'm going to uh, wildly entertain you with the depths of NSX identity firewall. So I chose this topic because really for a lot of our customers, it's almost a forgotten feature of NSX, but it's unbelievably powerful. Right? It allows us to be able to start to define security policy based on your identity, who you are when you log into the, a Windows machine and have a firewall policy follow you around as you maybe move into different environments. Right? So if you're, if you're doing something like uh, EUC or VDI, this becomes very, very powerful because now I can start to do things like log in as user one on a, on a virtual desktop, have a policy defined, and then shift gears, log in as a different user, same desktop, and have a totally different firewall policy based on my requirements and group membership applications, things of that nature. So very, very cool stuff. So what we're going to go through is a bit of a demo, or uh, I guess not really a demo, but look at some slides on how this is all put together. How do we use identity firewall inside of NSX to create a policy like this? So we've got a bit of a, a scenario here, right? Let's assume we're working in an EUC environment with a zero trust security policy, which means by default, I block everything, which is great, right? That's what we want to do. That's what NSX really enables us to do out of the box, which is a, a huge, huge requirement. The challenge would be that by default, ICMP ping, right? It, Traceroute also falls into ICMP as well, is uh, not a required protocol for my applications. If I'm a, a normal average user, I don't use ping for anything, right? But if I'm a network administrator or a system administrator, I use ping all the time, right? Is something working, something not working? Where's trace route? What's the pathing through my networks? I use it for troubleshooting a lot. So we want to be able to have the capability for system administrators to be able to utilize ping, but not have it work for our traditional users. How do you do that in a traditional physical firewall? It'd be tricky, right? Because you don't necessarily have those identity controls. Most physical firewalls have zero concept of who you are, and when you've logged in and what you might or might not have access to. They're typically based on a traditional five-tuple policy. What we'll see here with, with NSX and the identity firewall is that I can define policy based on who I am. So let's get into some details and see what that looks like. So here's a screenshot of what the actual policy looks like when it's deployed and active as a firewall role. And really, the majority of this is just traditional NSX distributed firewall policy. What we want to call out is this component here in the middle that's called out with the blue arrow that says source. And the intent there is that the source is a group called admins. Well, what's in that admin group, right? And what we're, what we're basing this off of is active directory membership. So we might create a group called domain admins or, or you know, system administrators to allow them to be able to pull that information in from, from NSX identity firewall and to find an appropriate policy. And we see that we're allowing ICMP echo and echo reply as part of our componentry. So let's look at how that actual rule itself was formulated. How did we get to this point to where this is the final rule and what it looks like? How did I manufacture this and what does this, this con comprise? So we're going to create an additional security group in this case not very creatively named, I called it admin ping. You know, some things you're more creative than others. But the idea is that I select dynamic membership and what I'm doing is here in the center where it says entity belongs to the group domain admins. So anybody who's a member of domain admins that logs in to the Windows environment would be seen by NSX through the identity firewall and have this appropriate security policy applied to them. Now, what we're not going to show, just because of interest of time, is how we configure the linkage between NSX and the Active Directory. Um, so th that's, that's a one-time step that's typically done, and then it's always there in place. But we'll, we'll see a, an enhancement we made to that in some of the upcoming slides. So then, uh, with that um, policy, based on the Active Directory, we're able to determine who was able to log in. So when we shift gears and look at how we, some of the scaling considerations, and when you think about how customers use Active Directory, typically there might be hundreds of thousands of users, hundreds of thousands of groups, or tens of thousands, right? Nevertheless, the identity firewall isn't necessarily a, a, an unlimited scale component. So we've added some optimizations as of NSX uh, 623 that allow us to be able to do things like ignore disabled users. I worked with a large customer uh, who, in their environment, when somebody left the company, their account wasn't ever really deleted, it was just disabled. 
and that sets a flag on their account inside of Active Directory. What we enabled in 623 was the ability for, Active, for the NSX to be able to pick that out and see that, hey, this user is disabled, I'm not going to synchronize it because it's a disabled user. They're not going to have a valid login anytime ever until that flag is removed. So by doing this, we're able to start to filter out all those disabled users. And, and this is especially important maybe for a company who does seasonal work, especially here in the States with uh, you know the end of the year and, and holiday time coming up, a lot of seasonal work workers uh, you know, get, get employed at, at different retail stores to stock shelves and run the registers and all those types of things. And then they're gone after the, uh, the end of the year, right? So, so for those types of companies that have a policy of not deleting users, but rather just disabling them, this really is a great scaling enhancement. So we see here in the red box where the, uh, it shows that the, the new feature is disabled, right? It didn't ignore disabled users. It's disabled by default. And what we'll do is we modify the configuration where there's a checkbox that says ignore disabled users. Pretty intuitive, right? It's not too hard to crack the code on what that box might actually <laughs> entail. But it allows us to be able to, to define the Windows AD domain, in this case, fuller.net. What a, what a great name. And uh, being able to have it ignore disabled users. And then also, what's also interesting with 6.2 um, versions of NSX Identity Firewall is we no longer require you to, to do log scrubbing, right? So I don't have to see the Active Directory logs to figure out what's actually happening. Um, I can, in this case, say that we don't want to do log, uh, log activation. So pretty, uh, pretty nice enhancement as well there, right, to where we just rely on the actual Active Directory state and don't have to kind of correlate with logs. So then now we can see that the feature's enabled. Good job, high fives. You're able to click on a box, click on OK, and let that take effect. So you, know, you are a master system administrator now, and uh, now it shows that it's enabled. So very, very cool capability that, as I mentioned, is, is really underutilized, but what we see is more customers gravitate towards higher density VDI or EUC environments, that this is exactly something that they're looking to do and a, a feature that they, they can take a great advantage of and really enhance the security posture of their entire environment. So with that, we've got some helpful resources. Certainly the NSX EUC design guide is a great resource. This is a living document, relatively new. Um, the NSX design guide, which is really the go-to resource for how to design an NSX deployment, that again is a living document. It's out there on the communities. Hands-on labs are always a classic, especially here at VMworld. We're, we're hearing that, uh, again, the NSX hands-on labs are the number one uh, leading lab again, so go team, that's awesome. And then finally, um, sometimes it's a good resource, maybe sometimes it's not. My, my own personal blog at ccie5851.blogspot.com. So thank you very much for the time and the opportunity. It was great, and uh, have a great VMworld.